watershed is located in Cache County, Utah, and provides water for a large portion of the south part of Cache Valley. The primary water bodies in the watershed are the Little Bear River and its tributaries, as well as the three reservoirs along that river. This watershed is important to several communities in Cache Valley, including the cities of Paradise, Hiram, Wellsville, and Menden. The Little Bear River watershed has three primary dams and reservoirs, the Cutler, Hiram, and Porcupine dams and reservoirs. The Cutler Reservoir, a somewhat repulsive looking body of water, was created when the Cutler Dam was completed in 1924, backing water up into what is now the Cutler Reservoir. Cutler Dam started producing power in 1927 and produces 106,000 megawatt hours annually, or about 12,000 homes worth. Cutler Dam is a concrete arch type dam of 110 feet tall, built by the Utah Power and Light Company, now part of the Pacific Corporation. Cutler Dam is set into the Bear River Canyon in western Cache Valley. Sedimentation has reduced the maximum storage capacity of this dam from 38,000 acre feet to 23,800 acre feet, though presently the dam is held at 8,181 acre feet of capacity. Water retention time is 2.42 days, so turnover is pretty quick. Cutler Reservoir is primarily fed by the Bear, Logan, and Little Bear Rivers and is about 12 miles long and 6 feet deep. This shallow depth allows for a lot of mixing, making the reservoir look far worse to the untrained eye than it actually is, when only judging by the water color and Secchi disk measurements. The structure of the reservoir leads to a lot of sediments mixed into the relatively warm water, which is all pretty homogeneous. The Cutler Reservoir is joined in its obstruction of the Little Bear River by the Hiram Dam and the Porcupine Dam, which are upstream of it. The Hiram Dam is the next upstream and is an embankment type dam, constructed from 1934 to 1935, with a final height of 116 feet. The dam is at an elevation of 4,666 feet and stores 18,685 acre feet of water. The Porcupine Dam is up in the foothills of the adjacent Bear River Mountains, built on the east fork of the Little Bear River and encloses 12,500 acre feet of water at an altitude of 5,381 feet. Porcupine Dam is also an embankment type dam and was built in 1962 and required 1 million cubic yards of fill, at the time the largest dam in Utah. The final depth of water in the reservoir is 139 feet. Among the Little Bear River watershed exists a gradient of freshwater fish species. At its highest reaches near Porcupine Reservoir, cold water species such as native mottled sculpin and introduced brown trout occur in the greatest proportions. And at its lowest reaches near Cutler Reservoir, warm water species such as introduced largemouth bass and common carp can be found in the greatest diversity among other non-natives. Every year at Porcupine Reservoir, introduced kokanee salmon can be observed in mid-September, making their run up the East Fork of Little Bear River to spawn. An important attraction for locals and tourists alike, and an important food resource for wildlife species during and after spawning. Although Hiram and Porcupine Reservoirs are popular spots for sport fishers, a recent survey conducted in 2013 reported that of the 10 species caught in the watershed, only two were native, the Bonneville cutthroat trout and mottled sculpin. Bonneville cutthroat trout should be present within the watershed's higher reaches in greater proportions, but brown trout are considered to have greater competitive ability due to a wider tolerance for temperature fluctuations, which leads to a greater ability to disperse throughout the watershed. The non-native brown trout were thought to be introduced to the system prior to damming of Porcupine Reservoir. More research on competitive abilities of brown trout within the system are necessary to understand the overall effects on native trout abundance. At the watershed's lowest reaches, Cutler Reservoir and Marsh is classified as an important bird area within the system. Many species of bird use the area for hunting, foraging, and nesting habitat, 
including bald eagles, ferruginous hawks, osprey, Caspian terns, American pelicans, peregrine falcons, Swainson's hawks, and grasshopper sparrows. Cutler Reservoir and Marsh is also an important migratory habitat for over 20 species of ducks, swans, and geese, as well as American avocets and many other shorebird species. The habitat types surrounding Cutler Reservoir include 48% open water, 11% grassland, 15% wetland, 15% wet meadow, 5% lowland riparian, 4% agriculture, and less than 2% playa. Riparian habitats are important for so many wildlife species because they provide access to food, water, and shelter within a relatively small area. Despite their small size, riparian areas are consistently found to have the greatest level of biological diversity of any other habitat type. This is attributed to the many vertical layers found within these zones, including grasslands, shrubs, and upper canopy trees. Fish communities are also often found in the greatest diversity in healthy riparian areas due to the ability of vegetation to stabilize stream channels and aid in reducing temperature fluctuations. Riparian habitat along the Little Bear River watershed has been heavily impacted by channel erosion. The lower water table resulting from channel incision and less meandering of the river has led to a reduction in quantity and quality of vegetation occurring in riparian areas. In response to the loss of riparian habitat, the Utah Department of Environmental Quality's Dig Division of Water Control implemented a plan to restore 35 acres of riparian area. Healthy riparian areas are beneficial to local communities in many ways because they mitigate flood risk, filter runoff pollution within the river system, and provide moderate use grazing areas for cattle. The public utilizes the Little Bear River watershed for a wide variety of recreation. During the warmer months, many people enjoy sport fishing, kayaking, and bird watching at the Porcupine, Hiram, and Cutler Reservoirs. There are also many who like to use the Porcupine and Hiram Reservoirs for swimming, cliff jumping, and camping. During the winter months, recreation in this area can also include cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, and ice fishing. A large portion of the watershed's lands are used for agricultural grazing and feed production for livestock. Within the watershed, there are approximately 21,024 acres of irrigated land. This irrigation water goes to alfalfa, hay and pasture land, small grains, corn, and some idle and miscellaneous crops. These crops can also serve as a means of carbon sequestering. Having two main drainages of the Little Bear River, the South Fork originating in the foothills of the Wellsva Mountains and the Bear River Range, and the East Fork, which is stored in the upper basin behind Porcupine Reservoir, roughly 2% of the area above the confluence of these two rivers is agricultural, but about 40% is agricultural below their confluence. In the summer, below Hiram Dam, the Little Bear River mostly transports irrigation return flow. During runoff events in the spring and early summer, the river may receive high flushing flows. Below the Hiram Reservoir, about 52% of the drainage use is agricultural. Man-made structures and agricultural practices along the Little Bear River watershed have led to changes in the nutrient flows of the river as well as other environmental impacts such as sedimentation. Construction of the Porcupine, Hiram, and Cutler Reservoirs has led to changes in the sediment flows of the Little Bear River. Sediments are blocked from moving downstream by the dams. Over time, as sediments build up behind the reservoirs, the reservoirs lose some of their capacity to hold water. In the future, the potential need to remove sediments from the Porcupine, Hiram, and Cutler Reservoirs could prove to be costly projects. The dams on the Little Bear River have also reduced the amounts of sediments moving downstream, which has changed the stability of riverbanks as well. Since human settlement along the Little Bear River began, there has been increased changes in nutrient loads within the watershed. A total maximum daily load report, or TMDL, was made in the 1990s 
for the Little Bear River, between the confluence of the two forks and where the river enters Cutler Reservoir. The report found that the lower section between Hiram Reservoir and Cutler Reservoir had water pollution from excess phosphorus and sediments, and that the straightening of channels had led to increased erosion of stream banks. The upper section between the confluence of the two forks and Hiram Reservoir had also seen increases in sediments and phosphorus entering the river. Phosphorus inputs have largely been from agriculture in the upper section, and this has mostly come from livestock waste entering the water. The lower section of the river has also seen increases in phosphorus from the waste treatment plant near Wellsville. Livestock grazing severely damaged vegetation along the Little Bear River, which has increased the amounts of sediments entering the river. Since the 1990s, there has been an increase in projects that have been focused on the restoration of the Little Bear River. Many BMPs, or best management practices, were established along the river to decrease phosphorus and sediment loads. These BMPs included stabilizing over 9,000 feet of riverbanks, in-river reach restoration, better grazing management practices being established, adding over 22,000 feet of fencing to protect riparian areas, and the installation of 59 animal waste holding structures. Between 2005 and 2009, a project was completed which shows how the BMPs helped improve the watershed. The BMPs are shown to have led to improved riparian habitat throughout the entire watershed. There are now more trees and vegetation and less exposed soil. This has led to decreased sediment loading. The riparian fencing especially helped in reducing the amounts of sediments entering the water. Animal waste holding structures, in the turn, led to the decreases in phosphorus loading in the watershed. And as such, the total phosphorus exceedance in the upper section of the Widow Bear River decreased from 34% exceedance in 1994 to only 8% exceedance in 2004. The total phosphorus exceedance in the lower section also decreased from 88% to 50 percent. So water quality has improved in the Little Bear River watershed, but there is a need for continued work. Not all the restoration and management projects remain in use, and many of the grazing management practices were not maintained. Additional work to reduce phosphorus and sediment additions into the watershed could greatly improve the water quality and reduce eutrophication in the reservoirs. The damming of the Widow Bear River has played an important role in the history of the people around the watershed, as well as that of the local ecosystem. The three dams along the river, Porcupine, Hiram, and Cutler, have played key roles in providing valuable water resources for the citizens of Cache Valley, particularly those involved in agriculture. Agriculture continues to play a large part in the economy of Cache Valley, so the water stored in these reservoirs remains important. The reservoirs have also provided valuable recreation areas for people, especially fishermen. But despite those benefits, the watershed has seen various negative impacts from the dam construction and agricultural practices, including habitat degradation and water pollution. The Widow Bear River watershed has seen recent restoration work to address those issues, but there is a need for continued work. Despite the damming of the river, the outlook is looking positive for the Widow Bear River watershed.